So all that I do is, is just spray it from the front and just take steam and just let it keep going, let it keep going, and this will eventually happen. This is insane. Like, you know how thick that is. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, today you can see we've got an evap that's like really iced up. And this has a key to therm evap efficiency controller on it. Uh, and I just walked in here, it said high room temp, but then a few minutes before that, I also saw excessive defrost. So we're gonna get this guy defrosted and figure out why. But I mean, the ice is completely packed behind that fan motor, it's insane. It's weird though that it's actually still somewhat cold in here with that much ice, but we'll get to the bottom of it. Look at that. Look at how iced up that is. Big old chunkers in there too. Um, sucks, man. This fan blade is cracked right here. These fan blades are a pain in the butt to get. Ugh, well, let's just keep going with this and see what happens. It's going to be almost impossible not to make a mess in here. And I don't, it's a walk-in freezer. You're not going to get water on the floor because it'll freeze and expand, but we can only do what we can do. So I've got power turned off. Um, we're going to go to town. Most walk-in freezer ECM motors have some sort of water resistance, but I still don't want to dunk them in water, you know? Um, that's where this wand really comes into play. I've shown this a million times, but it's got all the different settings on it, but I really like it because you can just go nice and slow. And I've got a pan down here, catching a residual drip drip. And uh, yeah, just a little bit at a time. Normally I work from the top down, but because I don't want to saturate the motor, I'm working from the bottom up, which is a little counterintuitive, but it'll still get the job done. And I'm lucky too that the customer has hot water. So that's nice. Little bit at a time. It's taken me quite a while just to get to this point because the drain pan's partially frozen over here too. So we just got pans down there to catch everything. See, it's just uh, nice and cold in here right now. This drain is draining really slow and I keep having to put these pans in here to catch a bunch of water. So I pulled it down just ever so slightly and uh, drains plugged up right there with like zip ties and stuff. Luckily it's right there so I'm going to clear it out and hopefully this thing starts draining better. The back of it, like I showed a minute ago, is still full of ice. So all that I do is, is just spray it from the front and just take steam and just let it keep going, let it keep going and this will eventually happen. This is insane. Like, look you know at how thick that is. That is a giant ice chunk. Holy crap. All right, I got all the ice in the electrical section. It was really bad in there too. I got that all melted. All behind the coil and very surprisingly, there is none in the expansion valve section. Go figure. All right, but there is a big old fat ball on the suction P-trap, which there's not a whole lot I can do about that right now because I don't have insulation, so. All right, I'm laying on the shelf. Uh, I went ahead and cut the P-trap off completely. I'm gonna send someone to go get me some insulation and we're gonna try to permanently fix that. I'm not great at cutting and making them perfect, but you know, I'll do the best I can. The other thing is more than likely, just from experience, we're gonna have bad sensors in this coil. And this right here tells me something. See how loose that sensor is? That's our suction temperature sensor, so that's gonna fudge with the superheat. But it was insulated pretty well, I'll give them that much. So maybe it's okay. But I'm pretty confident we're gonna have coil temperature sensors that are bad, because it was reading excessive defrost. Um, and due to like how difficult it is, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the sensor since I have the coil apart. Uh, making a pretty educated guess here, but I'll try to pull it up. I have the software. So when I get it all done and fixed, we'll pull it up and we'll analyze the history and uh, pretty confident we'll show bad coil sensors. So I'm gonna go ahead and get changing those right now. Uh, we also had a cracked fan blade, we're changing that too, so. All right, I got the sensors 
put back in the evaporator. The suction line, I still got to wrap it with tape. I got it nice and tight. And then the air temperature is back there, wired into the coil. I'm going to be able to access the coil via the Ethernet port right here, and I'll plug in the Wi Fi service tool and we'll access the controller parameters and everything from on my tablet. So I'm gonna start assembling this thing. Uh, my fan motors are coming back and then I've got some insulation coming back too. All right, I will never claim to be an insulator, okay? <laughs> I'm sure people are gonna make fun of me, but it'll work. I just gotta seal some more stuff up and I'll tape it up too. So, but that's better than it was, I guess. Like I said, I'm not an insulator, so I bet you anything this will be all ice tomorrow, but it's better than what it was before I got here, so I still got to put a little glue in a couple seams, but um, I'm also going to make a little piece for around this sensor right here to make it nice and tight, and then we're going to start this guy up. Okay, so I got the suction line sensor nice and secured, so it's good, and we're going to put this guy back together now. Um, this is my uh, Ethernet port that I plug into. I'll plug the Wi-Fi service tool into that and then be able to access everything from my tablet. Came up on the roof and uh, the sight glass is flashing. I'll zoom in for you. It's not bad, but it's definitely flashing. And this rack is full of pigeon crap. Uh, we put chicken wire around it a while ago, but these damn pigeons keep getting underneath it. To make a nest in here, but yeah, so we're gonna have to get some gas in this thing too. Oil level looks good though. So. All right, so I've got it pulled up on my tablet. Um, it's just connecting to the Wi-Fi service tool. Uh, box temp is 10 degrees. It's already getting cold in there, that's quick. Um, coil temp, I mean, I don't see anything very scary. Uh, Superheat's a little high right now, but let's give it some time. It's still trying to pull down. Let's look at the graph. Oh yeah, look at that. So, that's a lot of defrost. It just kept going into defrost. If I remember correctly, usually on these smart evaporators, there's some sort of an algorithm, and it looks at the difference between the room temp and the coil temp, and I believe that's how it goes into demand defrost. Um, typically, when we have this problem like this, my experience is, is that it's a bad defrost sensor or a bad coil sensor, or I mean air sensor. Uh, the room temperature sensor doesn't look to be bad, but the coil sensor looks a little funky. So anyways, I changed them all. Usually that solves our problem. Um, we're going to watch it. We got to jump up on the roof though, and like I said, uh, put some gas in it too. So Let's look at our set points here. We're set for negative 10. Um, Everything looks fine. Superheat set for eight degrees. We're still using demand defrost on it. I'll go ahead and leave that on. Yeah, everything's looking good, so we'll watch it for a bit. All right, they are up and running. Sight glass has been clear for a while. Added extra gas for the winter charge. Um, we're gonna talk to the customer and see if they want us to come back and do a thorough leak check. And that's pretty much it. We'll tell them to keep an eye on it. Now, like I said, this, this thing started happening before COVID, so who knows what the cause was. It's possible it was those sensors. I'm gonna try to check those in ice water right now, but we'll see. All right, my box is down to three degrees. We topped off the charge, fixed the P-trap, and uh, changed the fan blades. One of them was cracked. Changed the sensors preemptively. And I think that's it. They're gonna have to reorganize their box because it's a mess in here now, but. So the customer's story on this one is that it's actually been freezing up like this for about four months now. They said about a month before the whole COVID thing started is when they started noticing ice issues. They saw the ice, but it was still maintaining temperatures. So as we're coming towards the end of the lockdown, um, actually this was shot about a month ago, three weeks ago, something like that. But as we were coming towards the end of the lockdown, um, they decided they wanted to get it taken care of. And so I went out there. So that's probably why it was so thick because that had obviously been like that for a while. And the look at the back of the coil, when I showed that ice back there, you could tell that it had been thawing and refreezing because it was like soft and had smooth edges to it. The ice did. So it's been like that for a very long time. 
it's really hard to say exactly what started the issue, okay? Um, I went out on a limb and changed the sensors. And the main reason why I changed the sensors is because in the past I've had this problem and changing the sensors solved it, right? But I had the whole coil apart and I had all the product moved. And to be honest with you, to have to come back and do that again, um, it was worth taking the shot at putting in a couple sensors, actually three sensors. Um, financially, it was actually smarter to make that move because you know I was already up in there. And I did relay this information to the customer and they were aware that we were taking an educated guess and changing the sensors, um, but they trust the opinion that I gave them on that, okay? Now, um, certainly, again, I do not know if the sensors were 100% of the cause. Um, it's just one of those things. I really wish that this customer would let me install a door switch on this walk-in freezer door because I also have caught them several times leaving the door open. Um, it's very small and they're walking and I found them, you know, someone will open it and then walk away um, because the on the other side of the walk-in freezer, you walk through the walk-in cooler to get to it. So there could be a bunch of things going on. Um, the P-trap, uh, that was another thing too. Guys, I, I am not a genius. I am not an expert. I do not know how to do everything. I'm not, you know, like I do my best with the insulation, preferably um, to do that insulation to where I would never have a problem again is cut the refrigeration lines and feed new insulation down the pipe and have it as one solid piece. I know that's not even perfect either. Um, but that, in my opinion, is the best way uh, where we, we tend to have the least amount of problems. Um, unfortunately, because this box is so small, the customers stack those boxes up against that P-trap all the time and they just rip the insulation off. Um, so, you know, I did my best to cut some pieces. It clearly did not look beautiful. I would not want to put that in a place like in a big uh, um, box store or something where, you know, you go into Costco or Sam's Club and you look up and you could see the 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 piping and everything for all the refrigeration equipment and the insulation's on point usually. It looks really nice. This I would not want to show to the public. Um, but, you know, it's actually been a couple, three weeks or something like that since I've been there. I'd be kind of curious to know. I, I do, next time I go up there, I'm going to go in there and look at it. Um, I am kind of curious to know if the ice came through that. Um, I spent a bunch of time, even after I stopped filming, making sure that uh, the glue was filling in all the spots. I tightened it down as good as possible, held it, made sure it was nice and tight, and then also taped it. Obviously, the tape made it look even worse, but um, it served a purpose. But So I'm kind of curious to see if it actually still has um, ice coming through or if it's actually solid. Eh, be kind of curious to see. But um, that was that. I did find a leak or did not find a leak but we did top off the charge. Uh, I actually brought to the customer's attention. I did a quick leak check on the roof. And I wanna say that about two years ago, I think we had the same situation. When I worked on this, I think I had to top off the charge. You know, sometimes these calls, it's it's hard to remember some things. Like I, I'm, I, I might've put gas in it the last time I worked on it too. But anyways, um, customer, you know, I, I bring everything to their attention and they didn't want to look for a leak at this time. So I'm at their mercy. So we just do what we got to do. So topped off the charge, got it up and running. Um, haven't heard from the customer since. So no word I'm assuming is a good thing. So, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. Um, very, very soon, I will be having uh, my website go public and when that happens there'll be a merch store i'll have all these shirts that are behind me and the hats and everything up for sale uh if you guys are interested keep an eye out on that uh the website will be hvacrvideos.com um right now i think it's just a coming soon page i have a, a website developer guy working on it so last i heard there was a coming soon page but uh, when you guys do go through, check out hvacrvideos.com. I, I would say from the upload date of this video, I'm hoping for the website to go active within a week to a week and a half or so. So should be pretty soon that that'll pop up. Um, still trying to figure out a few things with like the whole store portion and everything and how that's going to work in sales tax and shipping and all that crap. But I'm doing my best to keep the prices of the shirts and the hats down as low as possible. Um, obviously I got to make a little bit of money on them, but I'm not looking to break the bank for anybody. Um, just a couple bucks per shirt is what I'd like to make in a profit. So we'll see, we'll see how it all works and you know, all that good stuff. Uh, keep in mind, I do live streams Monday evening, 5 PM Pacific time on YouTube, uh, work permitting. So long as I can get off work, 
uh, where I talk about these videos, answer questions, interact with you guys in the chat. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, throw out that True Tech Tools offer code, big picture, one word. If you use that code on truetechtools.com's website, you'll get 8% off of your guys' order. There's a few restrictions with certain tool brands and stuff where you can't use it, but you guys can figure out all that stuff, okay? Um, that's gonna be it for this one. We will catch you guys on the next one, okay?